All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Mc here. This is going to be your sit rep. It is 326 2024 as we are into the craziest month of March we have seen in quite some time. Things are just happening at breakneck speed. If you feel like you just can't keep your finger on the pulse of all of it, well, yeah, you're not alone. <laughs> this stuff, uh, it's, it's nuts. We got terrorist attacks happening in Russia. Uh, and then we've got, uh, we've got P Diddy on the run. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to look at his flights, where that guy's been the last 30 days. Very interesting to say the least. And, um, and then of course we've got, uh, uh, just a litany of other things happening. We've got a bridge that got taken out in Baltimore and so uh, we're going to look at that closer is just incredible what's going on. So, Hey, let's start out here. Let's kick it off in the skies over here in sky glass. And uh, we are sitting at around 215. Now, keep in mind that I have already stripped out Tex 2s, T38s, and the EC35s, which uh, equate to well over 100, probably close to 150 when you roll them all up. Total in the sky, taking those out, 215. But uh, again, it's not really the quantity that's up. It's the what is up, right? So let's do this. Let's take a look at the air refuelers just to see where these guys are. And just notice they are coast to coast right now. And then, of course, we add to the KC-135s. So we're going to go to the Pegasus, which is going to the B, uh, be the B-762. Look at this little string of aircraft right here. That's kind of an interesting, uh, the way these things are just kind of laid out right now. Coast to coast, very active, very busy. Let's take away those. Let's look at the folks that want to be incognito, the ones that just don't want to be seen those are always interesting. And uh, you've got one down here. That's a UK bird that looks to be kind of close to Haiti, just off of Guantanamo Bay. I don't know if there's any relationship there, but uh, that's folks that just don't want you to know what they're doing. All right. Okay. Now uh, we can look at C-17s. We'll look at that closer here in just a minute, but you can see that's uh, pretty active and busy. And what else catches my eye as we kind of go through it? We do have some H-47 banana copters, a couple over here near El Paso. There's two of those there, one off the East Coast. Let's jump over to Europe and see if it is a different story. And uh, yeah, a little busy. It's been kind of crazy the last couple of days over the UK. A lot of refuelers, a lot of helos. Uh, that could be part of a, a little flexing there in terms of this European exercise that's supposed to happen for a while. Look at the H-64 gunships, all right? These little dudes are uh, spectacular. Uh, they're really a very cool uh, helo. Uh, can do a lot of damage, but uh, look at the amount that's over the UK, even over Germany. Let's go back over to Conus. See if it tells us a different story. we got one right down here near Fort Hood, okay? Um, all right, let me just go through a little more, see if there's anything else catches my eye. In terms of that, I do see a couple R-135s up. Uh, those are both actually over the United States. And, well, let's just get into it. Let's go look at our watch list. This is uh, interesting. We'll start out over Europe. And just notice, uh, let me get this to a little north. Jake 17 looks to be running up and down the coastline of uh, Norway. And then we've got, there's that flurry. I was telling you, there's a lot of stuff going on over the, uh, over the UK right now. And then, of course, we got E3 Centuries up. We've got a lot of C-17s. We have um, survey aircraft over Europe. It's, uh, it's really pretty wild to watch all of the stuff that is up right now. It's uh, given the fact that Europe is, uh, you know, anywhere from six to eight hours ahead of us. And uh, this is, uh, again, look at this, the State Department, right? That's going to be... Uh, in and out of Baghdad, they kind of operate between Amman, Jordan, and Baghdad pretty frequently. Now this, uh, I'm just going to show you the survey aspect so you can see the numbers. Texas today, uh, heads up, you got a lot of surveys north to south, all right? And then we take those, we strip them out, and we just look at what's going on. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, intel birds. A lot of, uh, there's, you know, you got your gray birds that are up and uh, KC-135, typically associated with that danger box off of the, the coast of Southern Cal. And then those, that's all Customs and Border Patrol stuff. Very, very busy along the Texas border, right? And then, of course, uh, air refuelers everywhere, right? 25 of those, by the way, uh, when we counted them up. 
uh, of just the KC-135s plus another nine. So you're sitting around 35, 36 roughly um, in terms of air refuelers up over the United States. Okay, now that's your watch list. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to bounce over here to the Intel community because this I find interesting. Uh, just notice you've got them down kind of uh, Southeast Asia. You've got them uh, from the Philippines over to actually Malaysia, right? And then you've got a little blurb that just kind of bounces up between. Uh, it's over Pakistan, right on the border between Pakistan and India. Uh, and then, of course, look over Israel, very, very active and busy. We've seen that now since October 7th. The usual routes around Kaliningrad, just doing their daily uh, intel grab across uh, Europe there. And uh, over the United States, notice the flurry that's coming out of Savannah. All right, we've got one going into Kentucky. It looks like we got some transitions from D.C. out to the West Coast. Uh, the Texas piece coming out of Fort Hood. Looks like it ran kind of up there towards maybe... Uh, Fort Worth area, and then out towards kind of hill country. And then that little flurry there, that looks to be kind of uh, Tucson, uh, off to Los Angeles, et cetera. And then we do have this little burst right up here near Reno. That's where that one actually went to. We've been talking about Reno. All right. Now, this is going to be your drone activity. Just notice the transitions. Looks like we've got some movement back and forth between Southern Cal uh, and uh, the East Coast, and then, of course, up near the Canadian border. And then as we get down a little further, just notice uh, you've got it, uh, low altitude ones, high altitude ones. One looks to be break, uh, breaking out over the Black Sea, as always. That's going to be a Q4 drone, more than likely. And then we get down very low altitude over the Mediterranean. Uh, the other piece, too, from a drone perspective, is off that coastline of uh, Japan, right? Kind of... Uh, you know, just out there where we typically don't see them. We see them normally on the inside. Um, actually, let me, I'll come back to that piece because that feeds into something else. We've seen them on the inside of Japan between Japan and, say, uh, China, right, or uh, North and South Korea, et cetera. Uh, don't see them on the outside, which I find very interesting, all right? Uh, now let's look at just the R-135s. And uh, this just uh, pretty active and busy over the United States last five days. Now, the interesting piece is if I go over here to Europe, it, uh, notice this one here. When I start talking about the feds, just notice where the feds also happen to be. Exact same area. Coincidence? Probably not. All right. But uh, just notice this. Only one coming out over the Black Sea towards Constanta. That's it. From from uh, the European side of the house. Really unusual. That's five days, folks. And then this one, just notice again, that's coming out of Okinawa. It looks to be headed uh, north and south there. All right. Okay, let's talk C-17s. And uh, just uh, interesting piece here. That one looks to be very close to Trump's location. And then we got some broken traces that head out over um, that general area. Notice this one, too, that's in and out of Dominican Republic. I believe that's a UK aircraft, by the way. All right. And then, again, these broken traces headed down towards maybe Panama, Central America. The other one headed looks to be uh, down towards Bogota. Now, notice this. The traces coming out of Hawaii are significantly less this time. They were very heavy before, heavier up in the Anchorage, Alaska side of the house. Uh, East Coast covered up, as always. But then look how thick the traces are headed across the drink, right? Again, C-17s, long haul. This is logistics stuff, right? And then look at the thick, it's spaghetti, spaghetti noodles all the way through. Heavily focused out of Ramstein, but then look at the concentration here. Look at the stuff going in and out of Egypt and, uh, and Amman, Jordan, all right? So you get kind of in there a little closer you can see once that's Cairo. It looks like they're doing some more airdrops. Maybe they didn't land on people this time. Uh, but, yeah, you can just see uh, Jordan. It's right there, West Bank and the other. So my guess, they're probably taking people out of those countries. They're not delivering things. Maybe maybe delivering things in terms of pallets of money and uh, stuff that people may need. 
but they're also given free rides back. Okay, they come into Germany, then they jump on other aircraft like charters, and they go to the United States. And then, of course, all of this over on the Asian side of the house, in and out of Guam, and some Australian flights. The interesting piece here is uh, we've seen these that leave out of Perth and they head uh, westbound. And I was trying to figure out where they're going because they're broken traces, but it looks like maybe near Madagascar, right? So it looks like uh, the Aussies are over in that side of the house. Um, so let's do this. Let's get into uh, what's going on around the world in terms of the news side of the house, as well as the flights. We're going to kind of piece it all together for you. First off, I just want to point out, this is going to be weather mod. Um, and in fact, this is the name of this company is West Texas Weather Modification Association, right? So they have their own aircraft take off out of here. Um, this is very, very dangerous and how they are not um, being stopped by the insurance companies. Uh, the amount of damage that they cause on the ground when they go up and start cloud seeding. Listen, if you've got storms that are already brewing, it's already raining, uh, you don't need to stimulate that stuff. OK, and uh, this is what they do. Now, I go down to the board. The key thing here, we're just going to put it on play so you can uh, see how they kind of bounce in and out of the storms. Now, the storms don't show as moving because they are kind of slow moving. This pink and white stuff you see inside of these these high supercells, that's hail. OK, you get very large hail. I've shown it to you. Softball size just got hit with with. Uh, now, look, see how they just flew right into that storm. They're spraying as they go, okay? They're, they're releasing uh, stuff in and out of these areas, and it causes these storms to just uh, go onto like steroids, okay? Now, um, I've shown you on the ground what happens. Even hundreds of miles away, uh, they may spray here, and then all of a sudden, you know, Dallas-Fort Worth starts getting really heavy rain, flooding. Uh, hill country gets it, large hail, Okay, uh, companies like Allstate, State Farm, et cetera, they ought to be investigating these guys, associating this activity along with the storms, because as soon as they start to do it, they'll realize that they are doing a lot of damage and they're costing all of us, including people on the ground, a lot of money. Okay, uh, but you can see this is them flying in and out of these supercell storms, right? And just spraying the daylights out of it. So uh, I, I don't know. To me, this is criminal. All right. Just just saying it's it's not good. OK, but it doesn't stop there. These are look at all the flights uh, all the way back to December. You can see this is just one single airplane. There are hundreds of these bad dudes all across the United States and they even go by Weather Modification LLC. So let's uh, as I just showed you one of the flights, you can see the, the latest one. This was four days ago. You can see the activity, what it doesn't pull in. It's not showing the the radar weather but that would be the same as the one that we did see. And then on March 14th, again, uh, that looks to be a transition, probably not too much going on with that one. Uh, but these are, you know, these can be very volatile. All right. Um, so there is that aspect of it. Let's go to this piece because I do want to show you, this is weather mod LLC, right? I've gone and pulled the companies or the SOAR, which is a seeding operation, atmospheric research, um, acronym. This is over Saudi Arabia. I've shown you what happened in Mecca, Medina when they did the spraying. They are continuing to spray over Saudi. Uh, there's the part in West Texas, right? We just got whammied uh, here. In fact, I just had uh, tennis ball size hail uh, ruin my roof. Uh, that was all of about three weeks old. Okay. And you can see one transitioning over to, it looks to be Iceland. Uh, maybe it's parked there for right now, but over the United States, you can see very active uh, over the last five days. All right. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing low altitude wise here. And uh, maybe that may be part of the sore thing where they're doing the research side of the house. Okay. Um, but there's that aspect. Now we go over to the NOAA guys. And you may notice uh, down in this general area, Corpus Christi in Houston, very active and busy. Of course, we just got a ton of rain down there as well. Off the east coast of Florida up the eastern seaboard, over Minnesota. That seems to be kind of the heart of all of the, the stuff that's been going on up there in that neck of the woods. 
And, um, and then, of course, this is kind of strange, right there near Puerto Rico, between that and the U.S. Virgin Islands. But then you go here, and you take a gander at what you have from that standpoint. That is, uh, I mean, what you're near Cambodia. That's in Thailand, I believe. Um, but, again, weather modification. Uh, just to go show you, I'm going to go right here real fast because I want to show you this. This is near Jakarta. All right, but they're not hiding it. We showed you this last time. This is a new one. This will go till March 27th. So till tomorrow, what does that say right there? Weather modification technology flight. Okay. Now I just showed you Noah's in the same neck of the woods. Uh, yeah, yeah, not good. All right, let me go back over here. We showed you that flight. Let's go to this aspect. We're going to talk about the well. This would be your immigrant machine, and I just want to point out, notice the amount and frequency that's going in and out of central Mexico now, all right, and uh, in and out of El Paso down to central Mexico. Listen, they're not deporting people. They're bringing them in, all right? This is a return flight, probably to get more people, and uh, you can see them. San Antonio, big hub, all right? Where's that headed to? The other big hub up here, CBG, but they've got them at San Diego, um, this one, that's a 72 hour holding facility. Those are the only ones getting deported. And, uh, I would imagine that's not very much, but all the way up here, uh, this is just, you can see them Greensboro up here to Rochester. Um, you know, it's, it's endless, right? And so this will cycle and it'll happen again, uh, going the opposite direction and then they'll pick up more. And it just every single day, seven days a week. They are bringing people, flying them directly into our country. Treason, folks. Treason. Now, look at this. You may remember uh, just a couple of days ago, we had a bunch of folks that stormed the border. And, uh, and I think this was El Paso. Illegal immigrants who stormed the National Guard processed and released into the United States by Border Patrol. All right? Like I said, treason. If you are U.S. Border Patrol... Uh, I hope you get held accountable because you, even though you're following orders, uh, you are committing treason, all right? That is a national security risk, and you are aiding and abetting the enemy. All right, moving on. Okay, his flashbang, his schedule, looks like he's headed down to Raleigh, North Carolina. We can look at the weather map and see that is where he is indeed heading, all right? Then it looks like he's, um, I don't know what that is. That's not where his home is. Uh, up here, this is a senior living center, a.k.a. the swamp or the brown zone, um, as we like to call it. Uh, and we call it the brown zone because it's just one giant uh, toilet bowl. OK, it's it's it just needs to be flushed. OK, let's uh, get on over here to this piece. Uh, 2.32 a.m. All right. The things that are happening while most of us are asleep. OK, the swamp releases the second half of the omnibus. 1,200 pages that spend $1.2 trillion. This is your Bohica moment. Um, and uh, yeah, it's beyond broken. They need to all be thrown out on their asses, honestly. Uh, just absolutely makes me sick of what they're doing. Um, and then you basically weaponize the IRS, who's basically coming in and basically trying to get blood out of every stone, uh, threatening people, um, relentless on uh, their... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just pursuit of getting every dime, just turning you on your head and shaking you till the money comes out of your pockets. It's uh, absolutely incredible. Senate passes a massive spending bill in the middle of the night. Well, listen, let's go on to the next piece of this. As uh, MGA, uh, sorry, MTG files a motion to oust Speaker Johnson. Yeah, you know what? Throw them out. Throw all the bums out. And uh, the reality is, I'm thinking maybe you let her jump in and be the Speaker of the House, and a lot of this nonsense may stop because she seems to be the only one that has some type of a moral uh, compass and uh, is raising the flag on them every single time. So maybe that's our maybe that's our answer, and uh, and it shuts it down. Right? All right, moving on. Okay. If you saw this or not, uh, this piece uh, overnight just happened. The port of Baltimore paralyzed after a container ship strikes uh, this bridge and collapses it. Uh, this is live uh, footage. Let me turn the sound down, even though there really isn't any sound. But you can see just kind of uh, uh, everything that's just the whole bridge collapsed. It's incredible. 
It's a very large stretch of bridge, by the way. And uh, let me go down a little further. And uh, the name of this ship, uh, what's this right here? It looks like that is the, sh the, the area that they're looking at closer. Uh, we'll just get into this. Um, let me go down a little further because this will show you the area that was hit as we get into this. Uh, you'll see the rescue ships and everything else. This is a live ship tracker, uh, but you can see tons and tons of, of Coast Guard rescue ships. This is a section of bridge that is gone. That separates this side from that side. So anybody that was using that bridge to commute back and forth, going to be telecommuting for a very long time because that bridge will take uh, probably years to get uh, put back into play. So um, not good. Now, the interesting piece is you've got a lot of stuff that goes inside up here in the Baltimore. Uh, if it's inside here, it's not getting out. So if you had any military ships that were in, in here, uh, any cargo ships, anything like that, there's nothing past in this area because you've got such a debris field uh, that is down in the water. It's not safe. It won't be safe to pass for months, okay, um, until they get all that stuff cleared out. And then you've got the whole rebuilding of the bridge piece, which is going to take a long time. So very, very bad condition. 47-degree uh, water, all right, not good. Uh, so according to Marine Traffic and Vessel Finder, that's the apps that I typically show you, uh, the Dolly was uh, uh, headed from Baltimore to Colombo, uh, then headed to Sri Lanka and flying under a Singapore flag. So that's uh, Singapore, China. Um, and now this, um, uh, the ship is about 985 uh, feet long and 157 feet wide, according to the data from the traffic. Now I'm going to show you what that looked like when it collapsed. And uh, you can see this looks like almost like a demo. It's absolutely incredible that that right there would just cause an entire bridge to collapse. Now, yes, they did do some sonar. They found there are a lot of vehicles in the water. Uh, they're saying this is a mass, mass casualty event. Um, it looks like that one got hit on the Achilles heel. Not, not good. Okay. Well, hey, listen, here's the other piece that they're, that, uh, they're running on us right now, and that is uh, they are now launching a new gun control office. All right. Now, this, I, as I talk about weaponizing the IRS, weaponizing the DOJ, now you take uh, a state red flag laws that they are pushing. And uh, what that means is if you have people that are snitches and they think somebody may uh, be a risk or maybe even not a risk, uh, they're going to get uh, highly scrutinized and probably lose all of the rights to carry, et cetera, and probably even go to jail. So that is what this is all about. Look, hey, the Nazis did this in Germany uh, in the late 30s and all the way up until the 40s, okay? Um, and uh, that's what happens. So what, when you start to see governments trying to take the weapons out of people's hands, uh, that is because they have other plans for you and they need those guns gone in order to, to complete those plans, all right? So just remember that, okay. And speaking of that, look at this. Armed gangs attack Haiti's wealthiest enclaves, leaving bodies in the streets. Yeah, it's not good what is going on over there. Um, this, uh, this whole situation is, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, they're on an island. And if you have money and you're stuck on that island and you can't get over to the Dominican Republic, well, you are going to maybe be victimized by this. So just a heads up, that's what's going on right now um, as the company just continues to fall into chaos. All right, uh, let's see if we got anything. Big thing here, these are going to be probably tied to the LIDAR in terms of that. They are telling people that. Uh, it's an ocular hazard for LIDAR laser using aerial survey operations. Gives you where it's going. And um, yeah, aircraft with survey stuff. So yeah, they're telling you here, I've never seen TFRs we talked about in the past that were associated with that type of stuff. But, and then of course, Kwajalein looks like it still has a major um, TFR that's over that that island on the end there. It looks like... Uh, yeah, it's still that uh, electromagnetic radiation hazard. So it's a radar that has been activated. 
All right, and that's a missile box up here, but who owns it? Yeah, it looks like the Ruskies. Okay, let's move on to this next story here. All right, we've talked about the fact that uh, we know they're here. We know they're in the United States. We've watched uh, October 7th uh, attacks. We've watched the Russian attacks. France is now raising their alert on the highest level after suspected ISIS attack in Moscow. Uh, we know who created ISIS. If you don't know that, uh, you probably need to go do a little bit of research. Uh, but that was the United States. That was the Obama administration. And uh, those were the guys that, uh, you know, handled all the orange jumpsuit stuff. All right. Um, but, uh, yeah, we stood them up in Syria. We got all the migrants moving into Europe, et cetera. Everybody was fleeing. Uh, yeah, John, uh, you may remember no name. John McCain was actually caught. He had a video on his laptop showing all the green steam, screen stuff. Um, that was on, I think live leak was the, the name of the site that, uh, that was stolen. And, uh, ironically, uh, the video was hacked off of his laptop in while he was visiting Ukraine. Uh, go figure. So anyway, it's out there and, uh, yeah, it's all green screen. So, um, but nonetheless, as we look at our border, what's going on here in the United States, if you're not familiar with operation Northwind or sorry, Northwoods, um, that was an operation that the CIA actually was trying to do terrorist attacks inside the United States and blame Cuba on in uh, back, you know, in the, the Cold War days and, and when you had uh, Bay of Pigs and all the other stuff. They were trying to find a way to make the United States attack Cuba. And what they were going to do was cause terror attacks using aircraft and everything else that was out there. Yeah, fast forward 9-11, it makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? So anyway, I did do a blog on that. You can go out to uh, monkeyworks.com or monkeyworksus.com and look up that blog. It's called Operation Northwoods, and it's uh, pretty eye-opening. So, okay, let us uh, let me do this. I do want to talk about the P. Diddy piece. Let me jump over um, to this aspect. First and foremost, Homeland Security raids uh, P. Diddy's home in Los Angeles uh, and in Miami. Um, if you're not familiar with that story, he basically uh, boogied out of uh, out of Dodge yesterday, uh, so they think, all right? And um, this was uh, his aircraft over the past 30 days. You can see very frequent in and out of uh, Los Angeles, even into areas like um, uh, Opelika. Um, you can uh, see in and out of Miami, et cetera. But then there's a lot of flights that you see him headed down into the Caribbean, now, his final place right now is uh, he's down there in uh, Barbuda, I think is what it's called. Uh, his plane landed there last night. Let's see what happens from here. But uh, he evidently looks like he is on the run. But you can see, I mean, this guy's been all over the United States. Now, the interesting piece to all of this, as they go through and um, basically raid his house and everything else, um, his aircraft is called Love Air Express. OK, or not express love air LLC. It's under that umbrella. Um, but I do find it quite interesting that a man of color does the same thing that uh, Epstein and all of the corrupt politicians flying in and out of Epstein Island, known, known pedophilia ring. And uh, and none of them are even questioned. Uh, we don't see any raids going on in houses. We don't see any of that. Right. Uh, so uh, this guy does it and all of a sudden they're raiding his houses. He must be cutting in on their business probably. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, you do have to question. Uh, it seems to be a double standard. I'm just saying, not only for, the, for, for, for P. Diddy, which, uh, yeah, he's probably uh, very corrupt, very wrong, guilty as can be. Um, but, uh, but why are the other folks that were involved in this still walking around? Why aren't their houses been raided? Because there are two sets of laws, one that they go by, that is the elite or the politicians and ones that we go by. Okay. So there was that aspect. Um, and now here's the other thing we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit more. Let me go over to continue on with our stories. As we get into the terrorist piece, I do want to show you something I thought was interesting. Uh, well, first off, let's look at Biggs Army Airfield. All right, let me button this screen up just a little. Uh, just notice you have them coming in. These are Omni and Atlas Air, both 767-300s, one coming in from Baltimore, one coming in from Portsmouth. From there, they go down to Houston, 
and uh, and to El Paso, uh, which is just on the other side of the runway. They can't taxi. They actually have to take off and come back and land. However, I do believe these are all immigrant related. Okay. All right. Then we go over to Dover. This is where it gets really interesting because from the Dover perspective, just take a gander. 747s, a lot of heavies coming in and out. Where are they headed? Yeah, Europe. Two of them are actually headed to RZE Poland, forward operating base, and one into Ramstein. All right. Moving on. Uh, you can see this is uh, going to be your, uh, that's Ramstein. Just notice this is one that uh, actually uh, is coming in from Perot uh, Field, Fort Worth Alliance. All right. Again, Omni serves many, many masters. From there, it's headed back to JFK International. Listen, they typically don't take troops into JFK International. They take them straight to their bases. Um, the fact that that is going on, that tells me coming out of Ramstein, very likely those are immigrants coming out of Gaza and or the West Bank being pulled into JFK, which they will be processed when they arrive and sent out to uh, your neighborhoods. All right. And then again, you got another one, 747. These are the big boys. All right. Okay. Here's RZE Poland. This is where it gets interesting uh, because as you go down the line, there's a Marijet 767 coming out of Liberty City, Newark. All right. Going down a little further, uh, base commander out of Wiesbaden. Uh, the Brits are in and out. We see them. Let's go a little further to see who else we have. Another camera flight out of Dover, 747. That's arriving. Now leaving, you can see the Brits leave. Uh, this one, the, the base commander is back to Wiesbaden. As I go through a little bit more, I'll see if anything. There's a Coletta Air headed to Hong Kong. Uh, but what we're starting to see are a lot of large, heavy 747s coming into RZE Poland. All right, check this out. Death toll skyrockets after as an Islamic terrorist attack on Moscow uh, Concert Hall. You can see that place is torched. doesn't look good. Up to 140. Now, the interesting piece is that um, they, are, they, they caught them red-handed. They've got these guys. These people are talking, singing like canaries. Uh, but if I go back over here, I'm going to show you something. First off, this, uh, let me... Let me hit pause on this for just one second, okay? Uh, this is the guy, pre-interrogation, right? Got some little thing on the middle of his forehead. I don't know, maybe that's a blood splatter, maybe it's a mark. I don't really know. Just recognize the shirt. It's the same. Uh, 11 terrorists, all right? All uh, Muslims, uh, Tajik Muslims. Um, don't know the specifics on those guys, but um, they're singing like canaries. And then you go to the next piece here, and I'm going to hit pause again. This is after interrogation. Notice he's got the plastic around his neck, which means he was hooded. And um, and then, of course, uh, you can see he's got a black eye now. Looks pretty roughed up. Looks like he's been sweating. Got a little bit of slobber on his shirt. So I would imagine uh, they got every bit of information they needed out of that guy. All right. Um, and so uh, let's see. We already covered that piece. So anyway, I wanted to point that out because these, if they are – tied back to anybody either in Ukraine or and or our agency boys like the deep state, uh, then uh, this could get very interesting very quickly because uh, that would mean that we were actually behind the terrorist attacks. So let's uh, let's wait and see what happens. Um, but uh, something tells me that uh, these guys are probably going to be singing like canaries um, and they will probably out whoever gave them money uh, to do this. All right. Okay, National Cargo's just, again, I'm just going to show you the amount. All 747s, very active, very busy, all headed into the Middle East. Uh, and then this one here looks to be coming in and out of, um, that one's picking up Anchorage into Seoul, Korea. This particular one is probably picking up artillery. All right, this is going to be the Brits in and out of uh, California which is interesting, right? Very, very frequent here in the United States. And then, of course, notice, uh, you know, Middle East, in and out of Europe. Over to the next one, as uh, I know we're going a little bit long, let me just show you the, the Transportation Command. Again, very active and busy in and out of Europe. I don't see anything going into the Middle East. It looks to be all East Coast into Europe. All right, the Ruskies, they were active and busy out of Moscow, headed uh, kind of 
towards uh, Belarus, but uh, those have since landed. And then here's Omni, Honolulu to Guam. And uh, let's see, Western Global. Again, uh, this one looks to be going into Hong Kong from LAX. And then another one looks to be headed over to uh, Europe. All right. Well, listen, I know I ran a couple minutes over. We had a lot to cover, but uh, very, very important things going on out there. We need to stay on your toes because um, uh, the, the things that are happening in the United States, especially the terrorist attack piece, uh, we've been warned time and time again that um, you know we know they've come across the borders. We know they're here to hurt us. Uh, we continue to let them in uh, and give them money to make sure that they are um, you know, well prepared to attack us. So anyway, uh, just stay frosty for sure and uh, keep that powder dry. All right, that's it. You guys be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. You can check out the latest gear and products by selecting a QR code on your screen now or go to monkeyworksus.com.